Hello, everyone, and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Cole Kessler, an American who has joined the Israel Cycling Academy, the feeder team for the Israel Premier Tech team. And great to have you here, Cole. Uh, where are you in the world, firstly? Uh, I just arrived in Europe. I'm in Monaco currently uh, doing a bit of training, and then I head to a training camp in February in Girona with the team. So how has it been so far this year, moving to Europe? Uh, you've never lived in Europe this long before. So yeah, how is it just acclimatizing? You're very young as well, and uh, being on your, your own as well. Yeah, um, it's a bit like getting thrown in the deep end, uh, but I feel like I'm quite adaptable so it hasn't been too rough I mean it's easy everything's quite walkable where I'm at the moment so I can without having a car it's not too much of an issue I can walk down to the, the pharmacy walk down to the market and get the food that I need and um, yeah it's not too bad actually I, I like I quite like it here in Europe um, obviously I like home just like anybody else but um, it's nice I, I, I've met a lot of people here already and uh, I've got some riding partners and people to ride with so it's uh, quite nice actually. Have you already started meeting the team as well? You were on a training camp earlier with them. Yeah, yeah. We met, um, we all met in November in Israel at a fun team bonding camp. And uh, yeah, I like all the guys. I'll be rooming with um, Mason Holliman this year in Spain. Uh, that should be fun. Yeah, I like all the guys. They're all really cool. How are you finding the terrain compared to where you were in the US to Monaco? Have you, yeah, have you seen many Formula One drivers as well? <laughs> I haven't seen any Formula One drivers yet. Uh, I bet they're all on holiday somewhere, warm and sunny, like the Bahamas, I'd imagine, um, or on a yacht somewhere. But uh, no, it's um, Monaco is quite nice. A lot of the climbs are similar length to where I'm from. I'm from uh, the Los Angeles, Malibu area. And um, the climbing where I'm from is um, almost unbeatable, but here is a close second, I'd say. Um, it's just in Europe, it's hard to like keep the power, like keep the average power up because of all the, all the like roundabouts and all the traffic and everything. Whereas home, it's kind of like just open roads and it's just training's different there. But, um, yeah, I'd say Monaco is probably one of the closest places to home. It's like 20 to 30 minute climbs, perfect training. Um, it's just a bit colder, you know, LA is still like, like uh, 20 Celsius. Whereas here, you know, you're starting your rides at like five. So, uh, yeah, you got to layer up a bit, but um, I don't mind it. So anyways, just starting from the beginning, how did you kind of get into cycling? Because your racing history isn't that that big. Yeah. Um, so I only started a couple of years ago on the road, but uh, I did start on the mountain bike, which is very popular where I'm from. Like, I feel like everybody gets their start on the mountain bike. Um, both my parents do not ride. Um, I had a friend who had just moved from Switzerland who was really into like riding his bike in the, in the mountains. And, um, he invited me one day and, uh, I got really excited cause it was fun. And then I asked for a bike for Christmas, got a, a cool beginning mountain bike and then joined the, joined the local club, which then transitioned slowly into the high school mountain bike team, which is a big thing in, um, in California at least, but it's growing throughout the States is like high schools will have mountain bike teams and they compete in leagues and you race mountain bike races for your, for your school, which was cool. And then I wanted to get better. Um, I was like podiuming. I was, I was doing okay. I never, I didn't start good at all. Um, but I got better as I trained and then uh, I wanted to get really good at mountain biking. So I hopped on the road bike to train more efficiently in the off season. And then I fell in love with road biking and then just got stuck in with that, uh, joined the club progressed or COVID hit. And then, uh, I was like training 20 hours a week. Uh, and then I joined Lux. I got lucky with that. Really lucky with that. Um, and then it was just, and then I got thrown into Europe. It, everything happened so quick, but, uh, yeah, it was good. It's been fun. Yeah. So anyways, you said you've had, uh, well, we've all had the trouble with uh, the pandemic, but, um, last year, Okay, you, the, you went to the national championships. You won yeah. the junior title uh, in the time trial. So, yeah, does that, does that make you a time trial list? Or, yeah, how, how do you think? Um, I think once you, as you get higher up in the sport, becoming a pure time trialist becomes a lot more polarized. Like, you're either 
like winning or you're not. There's there's only like three time trial or three or four time trialists right now that like win. It's like Ghana, Bissinger, um, Primos, I'd say, and uh, probably Stefan Kuhn. Those are the four that really dominate. And um, I I'd say it's something that you have to really focus on and devote all your time and all your training for because it's quite specific training with a lot of just threshold work. Um, and that kind of can take away a bit from your other aspects of racing, like your VO2. Racing nowadays, I feel like is super punchy um, and like you need a lot of good VO2. Um, so I don't know if I want to focus solely on time trialing, but I think in under 23, I could get some decent results in a time trial. Um, I'd like to cr- uh, take a crack at GC only because I can I can keep my weight down for now and I can maybe climb decently and I can time trial decently. So if there was a good race that had some time trial Ks in it, I think I could fare well. Um, yeah, I don't know what I am yet, though. It's quite, quite early to say. I mean, when you look back at the winners of that title, you've got Brendan McNulty, a former winner of that title, uh, Adrian Costa, who unfortunately, yeah, could have been something great as well. So uh, Gregory Daniel as well. So you've got there's some big names there in terms of American cycling. Uh, mm-hmm. You also went to the World Championships in Flanders. How was that for you? You did the time trial and the road race. Yeah, that was an amazing experience. That was it's like a dream come true. I'd always wanted to go to Worlds. Um, didn't have the race that I wanted. Trained super hard for that, um, but just it's racing. Sometimes you just, you don't have it on the day, which was a bit disappointing, but I was just really happy to be there and uh, race with all the guys and give it a good crack. So I enjoyed it. Uh, Flanders must have been an experience as well with all the crowds. Yeah, the crowds were amazing. Um, crowds, it, the, the men's junior road race was pretty early in the morning. So I think people were, were either too hung over to show up or just we're trying to get enough sleep so that they could get smashed that day for the pro race. Um, so the crowds weren't as anticipated, but I got to watch the, uh, the pro race in the flesh and that was crazy. That was insane. So yeah. How did the Israel cycling Academy kind of, uh, come about and what was your reason for picking it? Obviously it's a development team. So, uh, yeah. riders go, well, can go up to the world tour team as well. I was approached by a couple of teams after I won the time trial at Ronda de Valle. Um, and I got second on GC at that race. And after that, Israel Startup Nation at the time um, kind of culminated. Like we, we were talking and um, they were just like keeping checks on me, like asking how I was doing, and seeing how I was doing at various races afterwards. And um, yeah, the door kind of opened then. Um, Roy Nickman, my uh, the, the team director at Lux, team manager, um, <clears throat> he kind of opened that door for me. But uh, after after I won the TT around the valet, I think I think they started to be like actually very interested. And then yeah, um, I signed the contract on the day of the world's TT, the morning of, and then. Yeah, I had a shit race, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I chose the team because um, I think that it that it fits me the best. It's a very um, it's a very laid back team, but they they also are going to put a lot of trust and um, a lot of spirit in me. Like they they want to see me grow and develop as a person and a rider, um, and the ability for them to put me on a on a squad with the world tour guys in various different races um is something that really appealed to me because i feed a lot off of um like experience and like like game like if, if i can race with a guy like chris Froome or at the time like a guy like Greipel, I mean, those guys have been in the pro peloton for 10 plus years like the experience that you can gain from a guy like that is unmatched so a team that can offer that um is really appealing to me so i was really happy with signing to the team and i don't think i could have gotten any better teams i mean it must be incredible that you, yeah as you said the prospect of potentially riding with chris Froome in some races full-time 
Tour de France champion, yeah, bad luck now, yeah. but he still has all that experience to, yeah. yeah, gain from. Yeah, I wouldn't count my man out. I wouldn't count Vrumi out. <laughs> Vrumi's got it in him, man. <laughs> but, well, the big question is, uh, well, since you're in Monaco, have you been uh, training with him as well? Well, he's got a knee injury, uh, so. He, he's, he's currently at the team camp, the pro camp uh, in Girona. I reckon he'll come back. If he's not back here, he'll be back in Malibu, and then I will have missed him because that's my training grounds, and he comes to visit sometimes, but uh, not visit me, but visit the roads. So, yeah, but if he is here, I'll definitely get on a couple rides with him and see how he's doing. But anyways, looking forward to 20, well, this season now, 2022. What, what kind of races are you hoping to race? The team's got me on a lot of race days. I think like 55, 60. So I'll be, I'll be getting, I'll be doing everything, the full spectrum. Uh, I start the season off with um, Tour Normandy. And then I do Circuit des Ardennes. I do uh, Roubaix, Liège. Um, and then we transfer into some more stage races later in the season. Like I, I think hopefully I'll do the baby Giro and, uh, if the USA for some reason sends a team to, um, to an 11 year, uh, I'd love to do that race, but I don't think the States have sent a team in a while. Well, you said it before we started, I think it's absolutely shocking that the U S have not got enough money to send a team to the total of near considering Trek, Specialized, Cannondale, there's so much money uh, yeah. in cycling. And then, well, Lance Armstrong could give a helping hand as well if he wanted to. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I don't know if, I don't know if technically Lance could get involved um, with anything with ECI. Yeah, that's but, true. <laughs> um, I do think that it is ridiculous that we don't have a team, um, especially at such a big event like that. I'd say that that is probably the biggest under 23 event in the Definitely. world. Um, and the fact that we don't get to show our talent there is beyond me. Um, I know that the States put a lot of money and development development into uh, a mountain biking. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the U S obviously we've had great names such as Greg Lamond, et cetera, et cetera. Andrew Hampstead, uh, TJ Van Garderen, Taylor Finney. But now it seems, well, it seems like your generation are going to try and bring it up again. But something like the Toro California, which, well, you would hope to ride one day, probably. Uh, yeah. It's been in this hiatus. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to get it back next year either. So, yeah, that must be a bit disheartening for you. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a bummer. Um, I think it's just because there's a lack of development pathway to get over to Europe. It's quite expensive. Um, the flight from the States to Europe can be in excess of a thousand dollars. And most people don't have that lying around to send their kid to Europe to race. Um, and there's one team, two teams, maybe uh, junior teams that send kids over Lux being the main one. Um, and yeah, it's just, if you're not racing in Europe, it's like pretty brutal to say, but like it, it's almost irrelevant. Like, like the crit scene and everything in the States is big and it's growing and Legion's doing a really good job at that. But if you want to have a professional career, I'd say it's tough to, to get it started um, racing solely in the United States. Finishing on a lighter note, um, who have you kind of looked up to when you were cycling? Uh, well, starting uh, out, you're still only 18. Definitely, definitely Chris Room was my biggest idol. He, the, When I watched him win the, I think it was the 2017 tour, um, I was like, I had no clue what was going on because I hadn't even touched a road bike yet, but I was into mountain biking and the tour was happening and I just wanted to see what was going on. I watched like maybe one stage and then the Champs-Élysées stage and uh, I was really inspired. And then Grant Thomas, um, I watched the first tour that I watched like a good couple stages at was um, the 2018 tour when he won. Um, so I was inspired by both of those guys. And then um, Peter Sagan for no reason other than just him being Peter Sagan just 
his personality was was really fun to experience. Um, so yeah, but I, I'd say my main idol was from his room. Um, so it's amazing to be on his team and get to uh, talk to him and hang out with him at team camp and stuff. Yeah, it will be absolutely uh, amazing to follow you this year, and we wish you all the best, of course. And uh, yeah, we'll, it'll be very exciting to see what races you do. And yeah, we'll probably have you back as well um, throughout yeah. the year. So thanks, thanks very much, Cole. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone watching. Of course, make sure to give Cole a follow on Instagram, wherever. We'll drop his details down below. And thank you as always for watching and have a nice day.